that guy? Is there a chance that plane can hold? We're having some bad weather up here. Unbelievable. Flight 1363 had to wait for the troubled Cessna 150 to land. By the time he waited for this 150 aircraft and pilot to land, and then they backtracked and got into position, now they're in a serious snowstorm, and they are getting contaminated. Even if Morwood had de-iced during his 30 minutes on the ground, Rotate. the delay may have been enough for the fluid to stop working. The plane's wings may once again have become coated in ice. It uh, came out in the uh, examination of Air Ontario pilots that there was a, a dire need for training uh, in terms of how the de-icing, anti-icing uh, systems worked and how long your aircraft was protected. As soon as uh, our accident occurred up in New York, we of course understood that it was a similar aircraft, in fact, a nearly identical aircraft to the Dryden accident airplane. The circumstances were similar in both accidents, and uh, the Dryden report was a tour de force, which helped us focus our investigation quite a bit. Justice Mashansky had released his interim report more than a year before the crash of Flight 405. His recommendations could have prevented it. Mashansky would soon discover that a breakdown in communication had cost the lives of 27 people in New York. During his inquiry, Justice Mashansky learned that there was another type of de-icing fluid available to the airline industry. It's called type two fluid. It's thicker than type one, which prevents it from immediately flowing off an aircraft. A type two fluid is uh, a much more gooey substance. I've heard it referred to as almost mucus-like. With holdover times of up to 45 minutes, it keeps ice from accumulating, then blows off the plane's surfaces at takeoff. 15 months before the US air crash, Mashansky recommended greater use of the thicker Type II fluid. Mashansky's investigators also studied de-icing practices at Toronto's Pearson Airport. We got hold of a film crew, and we waited and watched the weather very carefully until we found a forecast of freezing rain. And we tracked one aircraft which was heading for the Caribbean. The investigators discovered an alarming gap in the time between de-icing and takeoff. And from the time the aircraft was de-icing on the gate until the time the aircraft took off was somewhere in the order of 41 minutes. So there was no doubt that aircraft were departing Pearson Airport uh, with a partially or largely contaminated wing surface. We then went to uh, Chicago O'Hare this was the first airport to actually put in place runway and de-icing pads. And uh, it was very useful in terms of explaining to us how these had evolved, what type of uh, de-icing equipment they were using on them, how they worked. At the time of the US air crash, LaGuardia did not offer de-icing at the runway, only at the gate. Again, 15 months before the crash, Justice Mashansky recommended the placement of de-icing facilities at runways instead of terminal gates. Mashansky also recommended that pilots not only inspect their wings from the cockpit... Looks pretty good to me as far as I can see. ...but also from the cabin. U.S. Air 405, runway 13, clear for takeoff. Mashansky claims that his report could have prevented the crash at LaGuardia. But the Federal Aviation Administration claims it never received his report in 1990 and therefore couldn't pass the information along to airlines and pilots. But Justice Mashansky doesn't accept that. My second interim report went out in uh, uh, December of 1990. It was about a year and a half before the LaGuardia crash occurred. So I, I think... Uh, probably sat on somebody's desk. 
The crash of Flight 1363 resulted in dozens of recommendations that could save lives. The crash of Flight 405 ensured those recommendations were widely implemented. Well, there was a lot that came out of Dryden. I mean, uh, the commission came out with 192 recommendations. Uh, it changed uh, the whole nature of how we approach contamination. We now have uh, the runway and uh, de-icing uh, pads so they can get a final de-icing before they take off. This was something directly the result of the Dryden Commission inquiry. Today, most airlines use a new type of de-icing fluid. Type 4 de-icing fluid lasts longer. It will stick to a wing for up to two hours. As well, air traffic controllers must now be able to tell flight crews how long they will be delayed at the runway after being de-iced. Dryden is really the first accident that explored not only what happens in the pointed end of an airplane, but what happens within a corporate culture. It puts CEOs on notice that uh, they can't hide in the woodwork when an accident occurs. Dutch manufacturer Fokker went bankrupt in 1996. Despite this, in 2009, there were still 55 Fokker F-28 jets in operation worldwide, mostly in warmer climates. Nobody should ever lose their life due to a contamination accident again in commercial aviation, anywhere in a snow and ice environment. We've learned all the lessons.